Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy and uh, on today's Throwback Thursday, I want to share a bloom with you that is one of my favorites I've ever done. It kind of surprised me. Um, I think it's been almost a year and a half or so since I did this one. And I think I did this on an eight inch MDF round. So since I have not been able to paint and I want to paint so bad, hopefully after today, I wanted to share one of my favorite blooms with you. So in this bloom, I used a um, some of the frosted sorbet colors from Color Art, and they're so sparkly. So I'm going to go over the colors with you, and then I'll speed things up a little bit. But I really love this set. Um, they have a very large sparkle particulate in them, so they're nice to use kind of in your bottom layers of your bloom because then they peek through those um, colors toward the top and just give like this beautiful pop of color just so so pretty so I've got my pillow paint down uh, which I couldn't tell you at this point it's probably Glidden um, essentials or premium in eggshell because um, at this time I didn't use PPG yet <clears throat> so and I'm gonna list the colors in the description box for you all right, this first color is called Salmon Gum from Matisse. It's beautiful, like peachy color, kind of an orangey peach. Well, salmon, right? <laughs> I keep trying to find a funnier way to describe the salmon color than just salmon. Sometimes we make things difficult, don't we? Anyway, maybe you guys don't, but I do. Um, so... Then we're going to use Buttercup. Now, Buttercup is a very frosty, pale yellow. I love it. Um, the way, because it's underneath so many other colors, the way it comes through in this pour is it sort of has a goldish hint once the bloom is complete, because I used a lot of colors, but it's a great yellow. So, um... I must be mixing it up. Um, now the buttercup, I don't think the buttercup is part of the frosted sorbet, but look how beautiful it is. It's just like a happy, pale, it's lovely. And then next up, we're going to use um, Cobalt Turquoise from Golden. It's a fluid acrylic. It's a very nice turquoise. When I was first doing this bloom, I was like, this is kind of a strange color palette. But it just works. Like, the way it turns out, it just works. It was, it's, I'd like to do it on a, on a larger one and see how it does. You never know if it's going to be like a fluke that it just turned out great one time and then you can't recreate it. You know, you never know. But um, I really thought it was beautiful. So anyway, thank you guys for being patient with me, um, with my all of my ornament and vase <laughs> adventures. I'm not done. And uh, some, some throwback painting um, favorites. I do hope to be able to paint in the next few days. I am so hopeful. Um, it's just been really crazy around here. Busy, busy, busy. All right, so here is Cobalt Turquoise. I love how kind of muted and calm it is. It's just, it's a great color. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Next up is, I believe, Icy Iris, also from the Frosted Sorbet set. It's just a nice frosty, like, lavender iris color. Next up is Cherry Sorbet. It's a great color. It's just a nice, beautiful pink. And then now we're going to do our regular acrylic paint colors toward the top. So we're going to use greenish blue from Amsterdam. I 
All right, greenish blue, always a, a fan favorite in the Amsterdam color family. All right. Next up is a custom purple, and I didn't remember that I used this. So this is a mix of Australian red violet and either indigo from Matisse or in a danthrene blue from Golden. I think I used indigo. Um, actually, no, I think I used in danthrene blue. It's like a really great purple. And then we're going to use some Australian red violet from Matisse. Can't believe I forgot that I used this color. No wonder this bloom turned out so cool. I mean, how could it lose? The only thing I could mess up at this point is the blow. So this is blue black from Color Art. This is a vivid intense color. And oh no, that's Atelier Interactive, but Color Art makes one and it's a beautiful color. And then Australian Red Violet from Matisse. And then we're going to use a white cell activator. So we're going to use M Gram, which is the brand I use. You can use Amsterdam. I just really like M Gram. And I'm using Australian Floetrol. Um, I get my Australian Floetrol from Pixel Paint Designs here in the United States. And she gives you guys a 10% discount using Mandy10 in all caps. And her link is below. It's also where I get my boom gels. Um, and then, of course, there's 20% off of color art using Mandy1120. Um, that's obviously where we're use, getting all of our beautiful pigments from. So and don't forget to check the description box. There's lots of discount codes in the description box, so don't forget to check it out. All right, now I'm going to get in the way. I was still practicing the blow, which I still am. So don't judge me too harshly. I was learning. Not doing too bad, actually. As you can see, not blowing hard enough to expand the middle. Um, very gingerly trying to catch the petals. Um, but at the time that I did this, this was a really great effort for me. So um, you can tell that my paints are a little thick, too. Which is great for cell formation, but it is hard sometimes to, to blow it out. When I, I like to use white cell activator when you have a really nice pop of um, color underneath, like this Australian red violet or the blue black, or even like a phthalo turquoise. It's always really nice um, because that pop of white is so nice um, against the dark background. Um, so not the like the perfect, it's not the perfect blowout because you can see my petals are still very narrow, um, but the center is looking good. And since we have a lot of paint on here still, I'm trying to catch where I have some extra cell activator and kind of blow out those funky looking petals. Unfortunately, that one area is a little suspect. Um, but you can tell the center is really pretty. So I'm zooming you in so you can see the colors. It looks a little funky now, but it, it does end up turning out pretty nicely. Um, as I'm watching myself do this to voice over this video, I'm like, hurry up and focus on the weird part. Don't, don't mess with what's over there. Focus on this one naked part over here. Uh, it's progress, right? Not perfect. And I find when you tilt it, unless your whole design moves, which mine hardly ever does, um, unless your whole design moves, it just makes everything wonky. Now, if your whole design moves, it works perfectly. But I usually blow too hard where it's stuck down in one spot. Um, so I was using the turkey baster to kind of open up what was left in the, in the center there um, without blowing too hard. All right, I think at this point we just have to take a chance and spin and hope we're gonna cover it, right? And that helped a lot. So it opened up the center quite a bit. So now I'm giving it a pretty aggressive spin because I have the, that naked part that doesn't have good cell coverage, but there was a lot of paint on there. So a good aggressive spin kind of 
got way better coverage than I expected. So you can see while this is not a perfect bloom, look at the colors on this guy. Just beautiful color combination and under resin it was absolutely phenomenal. I, after I made this, I think I was like, wow, I made that, you know? <laughs> Sometimes you're just, you're happy, you know? Even if it's not a perfect glow, you're just like, wow, that's really pretty. So I thought this was a great one to share with you on this Throwback Thursday. I hope that everybody is getting ready for Christmas and um, my husband and I are in the middle of writing final papers for school. So we have been very much on lockdown over here. Um, but we finished this week for the semester, so hopefully uh, I'll get to paint soon. I do have some Christmas things to wrap up. I still need to do some ornaments and probably do some gift stuff, and I'll try to film anything that I do. But I appreciate you guys being so patient when things were so busy. So I'm going to bring you in for a close-up shortly so you can see how pretty. But just look at the color combination. It's just so gorgeous. So anyway, thank you so much for hanging in with me and watching and uh, being patient while the new content has been limited to ornaments. All right, so you can see how gorgeous those colors are up close. Um, just how beautiful. I love the way red, violet, and any kind of turquoise look together. And that custom purple is in there just enough to add some richness to the color. Um, you can see how frosty those colors are underneath there. And uh, as it dried, oh, it, it, was just, it was just a gorgeous bloom. I was really happy with it. Look how sparkly. It's just got so much depth, you know what I mean? You can see the beautiful warmth of that custom purple. So beautiful. So anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for hanging in with me. I'm just gonna keep showing you this little close up here so you're welcome to ooh and ah. You can see a little bit of that yellow peeking through right there. Um, I just, I really loved it. And uh, so yeah, thank you again. Hopefully I'm kind of showing you guys some of the, the fun parts. The reason why I like M. Graham is you see these tiny little cells right here. I noticed that I get more of those with M. Graham. And I love those, those are my favorite. And I love how clean the lines are. You get, they're not always like that, but you get a better propensity for those clear, clean um, cells and lacing lines. Um, I notice with Amsterdam, I, I get more of the fuzzy. It's not bad, you know, everybody does great with Amsterdam, but I just really like M. Graham. And is it more expensive? Yes, 100%. Um, but, you know, I don't go through cell activator paint too much. But I do get my M. Graham paint at Blick. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.